I'm Gary Nickerson. And I'm Quinn Taggart. And this is Outside My Window. With us today is Sergeant Andrew Joyce, who is a CPA, NCA, and has been with the RCMP for almost 30 years. He graduated from St. FX University with a business degree and subsequently worked for a national accounting firm and became a chartered accountant prior to joining the RCMP. He became a certified fraud examiner while with the RCMP, He's currently posted in the financial crime section. Sergeant Joyce, great to have you back. Yeah, it's very, very happy to be back uh, to, to spread this here message that I'm hoping to discuss today. So the latest statistics are out. They're really concerning. Sergeant Joyce, could you break down those numbers for us in terms of how they compare to previous years and how Nova Scotia compares to the other provinces? Yeah, for sure, Gary. Uh, it would be my pleasure to do so. Uh, the, the stats are alarming. Uh, no, n- nothing short of that. Uh, Nova Scotians have a record reported $3.6 million lost gamblers. Now, that's reported $3.6 million. Uh, how that, how that uh, number is arrived at is through various types of scams. Uh, ranging from investment scams to to emergency, what we call grandparent uh, scams, uh, and everything in between. Uh, the the uh, the amount of 3.6 million is up from 2.5 million uh, from the previous year, which we thought last year was an extraordinary amount. So that's like a 40% increase. Now we say for Nova Scotia that uh, that's a lot of money, but uh, Compared to the rest of the country, we're doing maybe a little better. Uh, Canada as a whole lost more than a half a billion, that's a billion with a B, dollars in, uh, in 2022. That, that is just an extraordinary amount. Uh, half a billion dollars, imagine where a billion dollars, or half a billion dollars would go, uh, what, we could, what we could do with that in our specific, uh, you know, going towards hospitals or have you. Now, what makes this number even more alarming is this. Studies have shown, accepted studies, accredited studies have shown that it is estimated that only between 5 and 10 percent of victims who are scammed actually report. Five to 10 percent. So that means if that is actually the case, take that $3.6 million for Nova Scotia or that half a billion dollars for Canada and multiply it by 90 or 95. That's what astronomical. Kind of, what That's kind alarming. of number do we have? It is just mind blowing. Now we know, we know ourselves, uh, like whether, whether you're a police, your teacher, you're hired, uh, your junior, your junior in age, your high school student, whatever, you're getting these here text messages, phone calls, emails, people who are attempting to defraud you. We're getting them all the time. The solution to this here is not the police. We are not going to police our way out of this mess. It's just too big. It's too vast. It's worldwide. The the persons who are responsible for this here uh, are what we believe are spread throughout the country and the world. We believe that they are organized. When you are So you receive this here phone call. We have in our minds that it is from one person. But police are of the belief that a majority of these are actually an organized group or groups that have worldwide connections. So you're not dealing with one person. You're dealing with an organization with a front person that may be actually speaking to you. It's hard to believe that there would be enough volume in that to to make it something that's organized. But 
you know, when you when you take the three point six million and you multiply it by ninety, it it does seem like a pretty lucrative business model. Yeah. Or even if you don't, I mean, a half a billion dollars in Canada, that's that's a pretty good industry. You know, that's that's not too bad. That's just Canada. That's just, what 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 about the U.S.? What about uh, you know uh, uh, Europe? Uh, their their uh, their experiences aren't a whole lot different than, than what we're experiencing. Canada is a great target. Uh, we're, we're we're a wealthy nation. We have our constitution that that. Uh, that uh, you know, basically it's it's not uh, it's not police led. I mean, police have to jump through a lot of hoops to you know to get uh, investigative uh, information on 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 leads and that kind of thing. It's not like some countries are you can you know some countries you can just walk down to a bank and say hey I want all this here and this this person and that person and, and you get it five minutes later. I mean here here in this country we we're waiting three months to get. That kind of information on the cases. So the the, the, the criminals worldwide they, they know that they, they know what uh, they know what Canadians are are up against. They know our wealth and 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 their organization is as I say is set up. Uh, as you say they're 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 smart, they're sophisticated, they're articulate, they're articulate. You know they're tech savvy. Um, and basically, they 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 can set themselves up to 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 be whoever you subconsciously want them to be, and, and you know they're, they're as I say organized and and, and ruthless. I mean they, they are certainly ruthless. so. As, as I say, um, I, I don't believe that uh, that we can police police our way out of this mess. I, I believe the only solution that we we can do is um, is is educate ourselves. Is is basically arm ourselves with uh, with information to uh, to enable us to recognize that when we are or somebody is looking to make us a victim, and we're able to recognize those uh, those indicators, those red flags, and. That's basically what I'm hoping to discuss with you guys today is, um, you know, I, I have five things that, that uh, I find are very successful, five simple things that for the majority, 99% of the frauds that I've seen in 30 years in this business, uh, you know, you know those five things, it enables you to quickly recognize that, hey, this person is trying to make me a victim, trying to make me a statistic. Uh, who who are the victims? The victims basically it could be a business or 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 a person, regardless of your sex, your race, your color, your age, your religion, regardless of all that. As long as you have money or assets that you can convert to money, personal information, you know, you have a have a SIN number, or uh, you know, or or and capability of possibly being a mule of some kind of you can use your bank account or 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 to travel with contraband. If you if you can bring one of those things to the table, then you are of interest uh, to, to these scammers. And uh, quite often uh, we bring all three or four of these things to the table and uh, and, and and they will they, they will they will take advantage of all four. Uh, it, given the opportunity. Sergeant Joyce, uh, the numbers that are that are in the slide that we have up on the screen, do those include business fraud as well, like supply chain fraud and the like? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, they do. Um, th those numbers uh, are actually the numbers from the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. So those aren't RCMP numbers. Those are numbers that have been reported and, and, and supported. Uh, to to the uh, Canadian Anti Fraud Center, uh, which which I urge all 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 the, all the persons uh, listening to this today to visit that the Canadian Anti Fraud Center. Uh, Google it uh, to, to come to the Senate to uh, to find the site. It's just a host of uh, of information. It's, it's probably the best site that I've, it's certainly the best Canadian site that I have come across uh, that will that will allow you like. All those uh, all those different uh, frauds that are there. Well, they have like a hundred and some, like all in alphabetical order or, or all categorized in, in a different fashion to allow you to find something 
of, of interest to you. Uh, but there are like all those ones that are listed, they're all defined, like yeah, they're all defined in, in uh, some of the, uh, the different iterations of each one are, are explained in there as well. Um, so I, I urge anybody to go there and, 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 uh, and, and basically surf on that site there for a little while and, and uh, you'll come up with a wealth of information there, information on how to protect yourself, information on how to report a fraud or, or if you were a victim, what to do if you were a victim of a certain kind of fraud. You know, if someone, one type of fraud would have you do something different than another type of fraud, so they give you some guidance there. You know, it's, a, it's a great site uh, for, for anybody to go visit and, and learn about that. Um, but as, as I say, what I, what I want to discuss here today, like, is basically the the recognize, uh, reject, or report of, of frauds. But the big thing that I want our listeners to to pick up today is is how to recognize a fraud. The the reject and the report thing. Well, that's easy, but how do we recognize a fraud? That that's basically what I would like to hit on today, if if it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's go through those five signals that that you were talking about a second ago. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, the the first one, as I say, they're they're not they're not um, they're not sophisticated. They're not. Uh, you don't need to be an Einstein to to understand them. Uh, they're they're very simple. Uh, but there are five things that basically that the fraudsters don't want you to know that they you know they make great efforts to conceal. Uh, and, uh, but it's it's five things I find that very very much works uh, you know, to to allow somebody not to be a victim. If one is armed with that knowledge, then then uh, I think we will have uh, the more people that are armed, uh, the more success we will have reducing that number to a point where um, you know they won't bother with us Nova Scotians or they won't bother with us Canadians. So they'll move uh, on to uh, other pastures to. To, uh, to, uh, to, to sell their wares, basically, or, and um, some, somewhere else other than Canada. I mean, that's, that's certainly my goal, for, for sure, is to, for, for these guys not to find Canada lucrative anymore. Uh, and anyway, so the, the first one uh, is, is what we call the unknown, unsolicited contact. That's a situation where you get this email, phone call, text message from somebody you never heard of. Didn't you didn't ask for it? You don't know them. We suggest very strongly that when you get that text, when you get that phone call, or email, that you reject it. You don't bite on it. You don't open up that email or that text message, and you don't take that phone call. Simple, simple as that, unknown, unsolicited. The second signal or red flag that we suggest is the form of payment. If you are in the situation and you're in the discussion with somebody for whatever reason, you, you, you've taken on this, un, or you've been tricked into taking on this unknown, unsolicited contact, and you're now in communications with them, and they've and they've been talking to you, and everything sounds so real, sounds so legitimate, sounds like something that you must do, and then they're asking for payment, and this payment is coming by a cryptocurrency, or a gift card, or or a, a wire transfer. You're asked to provide money in that fashion. That is a red flag. You are being scammed. The third thing, the third red flag signal is a threat. Somebody, <clears throat> again, you've, you've taken this here unsolicited, unknown contact and you're communicating with them and now you're getting threatened. That is the red flag for you were being scammed. Somebody is telling you that you have to provide money or you will be arrested or deported. 
that is a red flag for you. You are being scammed. Threats plus your money equals scam. The fourth thing is urgency. Now, I understand that many of your listeners are, are off a similar vintage as mine. We have you know, a little, little bit of experience behind, uh, behind us. We've been down the stream a little ways. And even when we walk into a legitimate business now, whether it be a, you know, a car dealership or some kind of a, a, a business where they're, they're pitching, and they present you with a situation, you know, you should, you should do this now because this deal won't be here tomorrow. Well, one thing I've learned through my years is that deal is always there tomorrow. Usually, usually it's better. So what we're suggesting is any time that you're in a situation where they're presenting an urgency, you do this here, you got to do it now. Uh, and basically upping, upping the temperature up for you to act right away without thinking. Because they don't want you to think. Urgency plus your money equals scam. The fifth and final thing is what we call the unavailable red flag. Now, that unavailable red flag applies to a lot of different scams. One we call a romance scam. We can talk more about that romance scam later on. It's probably, in my experience, uh, I mean, all scams are can, can be devastating. Many are, but none, in my experience, have been more devastating than the world scam. If you're in a relationship with a person and you have never met this person, they're unavailable for you to meet. They have a great story. They're doctor somewhere in another country or they're in the military in another country for whatever reason uh, or they're an oil they're an oil rig and they can't get off the oil rig that could be the actual case in most cases it seems to be a fraud but what we're saying is the minute that they ask you you're in that situation having this relationship you've, you've you've passed back and forth information about each other and you both are now saying that you care for each other deeply the minute that it turns to you to provide money or use of your bank account or other personal identification like your sin number that kind of thing you are being scared it even has got to the point where none of that can happen, but they will entice you to go and meet them in another country where they, again, are usually unavailable for whatever reason. They'll have a great story, a great believable story, and then ask you to go to another country, but this time you are unknowingly carrying contraband. They have managed to get contraband into your possession and you are carrying that contraband to the third country. And that we, we are cautioning people who are in relationships with people online and you are asked to travel to a foreign country and you have yet to meet that person, cautioning you very, very deeply to say, wait a minute here, what is going? Why, why, are, why am I in a relationship with somebody who I feel so deeply for, but for whatever reason, roadblocks are always going up that we cannot actually meet in person. And then you are asking to do something, whether it's uh, you know, going to another country or providing your use of your bank account or you're providing money to them. Even if they provided you some initial bait money, basically to basically take you, you know, 
create more trust in them, create more, uh, you know, uh, credence to the, to the story that they are selling in that situation. So the unavailable in a romance scam, the unavailable, uh, the unavailable in, uh, in say, say a rental scam, which is very common, very, very common in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in places where, uh, you know, in, in student type populations or, or we're, uh, you know, we're, we're basically uh, uh, housing, housing is limited. They're, 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 oh, they maybe advertise something on, on a classified ad, ad uh, site and it, and it ticks all your boxes. But for whatever reason, the person is unavailable to meet with you, unavailable to show you. But because you are you, if you would send them this here amount and deposit, uh, they will uh, they they will hold the place for you. That is always a scam. People people love businesses uh, and people don't rent places. I know I don't know, like a uh, a believable story. Oh, they happen to be in a country at this time. Just just when they just when they advertised it available but they happen to be down in the states or, or over in europe or you know some crazy but believable story especially believable to somebody who may be desperate at the time to find uh, to find some housing this unavailable thing also applies to like the classified scam whether you're you know you're 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 looking at these here sites for a certain type of property whether it may be a generator or something so, something that you you need or want or in a hurry to get, and you know you contact them and they'll say, well, yeah, we'll hold it for you if you if you send this half half the money now, and uh, it never materializes. You always always seem to be uh, always seem to be getting scanned. So those are the five things there: the unsolicited, uh, unavailable, uh, uh, the the payment. Uh, in form of cryptocurrency, gift card, uh, wire transfer, uh, threats, uh, the urgency that is present, presented. Th those five things is is basically the the uh, knowing those five things and, uh, and understanding those five things. And and basically, anytime you hear like if somebody's reporting something on the radio, uh, of the, you know the, the latest scam. Well, think of these five things and how does that apply to what they are describing on the radio? And you will see that that oh yeah, here's that here's that uh, you know here's that threat thing that uh, that Joyce was speaking to me about on this here podcast. Uh, that, that's that what he was talking about. Or here's that urgency that was that was being presented. Uh, you know, you, you'll recognize those red flags like any, any time you hear of that. Now. Now the part that that I think is the most important part, and that's the part of what I want everyone that is listening to this to do. If you're understanding what I'm talking about here, share it. Share it with with uh, you know with with your friends. Share it with your families. Like if if, uh, if person's listening listening to this here or off my vintage, well, share it with your children. Share it with your grandchildren, because nobody, nobody is is uh, too young or too old to be a victim. As I had mentioned, you just got to have one of the four things that I had mentioned to you. We have have some jingle in your pocket, some assets that they might be interested in. You're of interest to them. Have a, have a have a, a bank account. You're of interest to them. Although well, those things, you know, so so share it with, with those persons uh, and, and get the word out. And, and we need to really educate ourselves. Do we have a have an opportunity to uh, to be present at the presentation by whether it's you know, banks or police or somebody else in the community that is presenting on, on fraud and fraud tips? Take the opportunity and bring. Bring along some of your family. Like I say it, 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 regardless of their age, if they're you know if they're 15 years old, bring them along. You know, if they're if they're 95 years old, bring them along because uh, they they are potential victims in the eyes of the fraudster. Certainly, uh, Sergeant Joyce, there's there's a bit of an embarrassment factor that kind of goes along with it that might make it a little intimidating for people to 
want to come forward and report a lot of these frauds and, and scams and the like. But, you know, seriously, we want to encourage people that if they feel they've been a victim or, or even, you know, have received some of these suspicious phone calls, texts, or emails to come forward and report these. This is how people understand what's going on. Yeah, for sure. I, certainly, certainly, uh, certainly, if you've been a victim, I suggest they contact the, you know, the police of jurisdiction of where you live. Uh, contact them. Uh, contact the uh, the Canadian Anti Fraud Center. I share that information with them. But uh, you know, there, there's a host of reasons why uh, why you know, uh, you know, ninety to ninety five percent of the people aren't reporting uh, being a victim. Uh, and you know, why why that is. It all depends on the circumstance of the, of the individual or the company that is involved. So yeah, we, we certainly urge anybody to, to do that. For sure. Are there certain types of scams? I mean, I, obviously looking at the statistics, there's a lot of money that are, that, that that's kind of seems to be lost in the investment side of things. But are there certain types of scams that were a little bit more susceptible here on the East Coast and say West Coast or Central Canada? These scammers, uh, I'm of the belief, you know, as, as I say, they're they're very organized. They're 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 always looking for opportunity to to basically get their hands into your pockets. Um, like for instance, here in the East Coast, uh, uh, in the fall, there we we experienced Hurricane Fiona. So so that circumstance presents uh, uh, a situation for fraudsters to to uh, to to basically set up like a contractor type scenario of fraud so somebody is a contractor and they're looking looking they were demanding down payments you know and then, and then all the legitimate contractors that are just so busy you know you're on a waiting list and your roof is leaking and and uh your the the roofer that you've been referred to from from your neighbor who had his roof done two or three years ago he can get to your roof in three or four months time uh, so you you see something maybe that pops up on your uh, on your social media saying he does does roofing and uh, you know the price is right blah 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 but this requires uh, requires a down payment of uh, five five ten thousand dollars and Basically, you, through your desperation, you you bite on that uh, without really researching who you're sending money to. Basically, doing what we call your due diligence, and um, and, and many times that, that that is you know that that is you know, it's, it's gone. It's, it's just gone into into the abyss. So so those situations certainly exist. Like what, whatever's happening in 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 the world at, at the time. Uh, these these persons are so organized uh, and looking for an opportunity to to take whatever circumstance is available. Uh, you, know, you know, for for if if uh, if an area is has a high unemployment area, well, they're 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 aware of that. They they're able to to you know, make that connection, and then they they present that scam in that area. So, so they're very, very flexible, very organized, and very, very good at what they do. Very convincing. And as I say, you think you're only dealing with one person, or we have in our minds that these fraudsters are one single person. Uh, for the most part, or for for a large part, they are not. They are an organized group. It's really tough, you know, for people to separate the emotion of the situation away from, you know, their average common sense and logic that normally would present itself in a situation like this. You know, when you get the call about the, uh, the grandkid, uh, scam, you know, they're in jail and you need money. Uh, you know, they're playing on your emotions and they're, and they're relying on you to weigh in on your emotions rather than logic. Absolutely. That, that grandparent scam, uh, I, I think uh, what we call the emergency scam in that list uh, of statistics that I gave you, it was, I think it was number 10 or something like that in the uh, top frauds in Canada, uh, of only $60,000. I'm fairly confident 
uh, uh, that uh, that will be surpassed uh, this coming year because we had a we had a rash of them at the at the beginning of the year and they're still somewhat ongoing in the uh, in the Halifax area. Uh, I'm I'm fairly certain that'll 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 raise up uh, next year. As I say, it goes and goes in peaks and valleys. I, as you as as you say, that urgency was presented, and knowing those red flags there that I mentioned earlier, you're presented in a situation where it's urgent and they're they're hitting on those emotions. They 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 don't want you to think. They don't want you to reach out and contact you know the person uh, the person's uh, parent or the person's uh, sibling say okay is this person really in jail or is this person really in this here predicament that you described himself to be in um, they, they don't want you to do that they, they want you to feel that urgency to feel the heat that they're trying to turn up on you to just send them the money so but knowing what we know urgency plus your money equals scam you are quick to recognize that Quick to step back. If you've got one of those phone calls, you step back, take your time, and maybe discuss it with somebody else in your family or present the situation that is being presented to you. Do you think, Sergeant Joyce, that social media just makes it a heck of a lot easier for these scammers to perpetuate? Without a doubt, uh, without a doubt, it's certainly adding to the uh, adding to the uh, to the problem. It's one of the reasons why the industry is is growing leaps and bounds. I mean, you know, we're, we're off the vintage, uh, the three of us here, it, that uh, that it, uh, we can recall getting the snail mail, getting those letters in the mail from from Nigeria, from the Nigerian prince, you know, uh, you know, uh, having having uh, basically uh, you know a million dollars in in gold that he's looking to get out of a certain area and needs our help. And, and if we're able to send him, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars, and uh, he'll he'll give us half of it, and that kind of thing. Um, and basically, what what the social media has has uh, has enabled these scammers to do is have that immediate and even more personal contact with us twenty four seven. Before they're relied basically on uh, on snail mail and telephone calls. Now they have you know, cell phones where everybody has their own phone and it can be somewhat isolated to, to the text messaging, to the, to, the, uh, to the emails and to the social media pop-up, uh, pop-up scams that are, that are out there. But one thing I have noticed, uh, guys, is, is that for the most part, the scams in the last 20, 25 years are basically the same. They're camouflaged to look a little different, to gain your trust a little differently, but really the the, the nuts and the bolts of the scam really hasn't changed any. It's just being able to recognize those five red flags that we were, that we discussed earlier and to allow you to see past the smoke and mirrors and urgency that they are they are, they are presenting to you to make you feel at ease and let your guard down. That that's that's what's changed. It being able to recognize, oh, somebody here is just putting up some smoke and mirrors to me, trying to hide that they're that they are an unknown contractor, they're unsolicited, they're spoofing their email or spoofing their phone call to basically make you put your guard down uh, to to believe that they are somebody who you're not. Sergeant Joyce, I'm appalled at the level of insidiousness uh, of, of some of these scams. I was scams, pardon me. I was reading the other day um, news release from HRM police, and I'm sure you were aware of this. Um, and this is really scary: uh, an extortion scam circulating in the Halifax area, where scammers contact victims by phone or text, I guess, accuse them of attempting to use an escort service and demand payment, and then the scammers claim to be members of our cartel, and they send these very graphic photos, I guess, of uh, which depict violence and threaten to harm the victim. Or, or their loved ones, if they don't respond. I mean, this is scary stuff. So they, th- these criminals will really do anything to 
to get money, won't they? You're, you're absolutely right. They're, they will they will do whatever it takes, you know, whatever button that they think that you may be uh, uh, susceptible to accept, to bite on, whatever whatever bait that they present to you. Like we, we all we all are susceptible to different types of bait, but uh, they they will they will present a host of different things out there to see if you will bite on one. But again, like this, this news—it's certainly not new, but it's 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 uh, the one that's floating now, as you described. Well, that's that's again the the, the red flags that we, we presented that we talked about here today was that the unknown, unsolicited contact, the threat, and then and then also they're presenting an urgency. I mean, you you act now, yeah, or, or we'll tell the whole world that you've been trying to get trying to. Uh, you know, locate at or, or using escort services or something like that. That that whole that that threat thing, and then and then and then possibly the payment as well. Or whatever payment they're asking for, are they asking for payment like a wire transfer, or a gift card? But I mean, they, they certainly all do not need to be present. All I'm suggesting here is is just one of those things are present. Just recognize one of those three or four things that uh, that that uh, that I had mentioned. One of those things are present. Step back and, and discuss this with somebody close in your lives, whether it be police, whether it be friends, whether it be family, uh, be a, a teacher, whoever. But step back and, and present that situation to that person. And, and, uh, and I want to go back to a point that you were making. I found it very interesting uh, that these scammers, these criminals, um, are you know just some individuals sitting you know at a phone or in front of their laptop that these are criminal organizations that it's organized crime um are these people based in canada or overseas or is it anywhere we we are the belief that the well first of all these persons could be anywhere they could be outside my window outside your window they could be in another province or they could be a half a country away and for a large degree uh, they they are many of those things they are certainly in canada uh, but certainly outside of canada as well and we're of the belief the organization is is outside of canada mainly i mean that's the, the nuts and bolts of it with contacts within Canada doing certain work for this here organization. These criminals are very good at what they do, as, as you've mentioned, and, and Peggy and Ashley spoke about that as well. I mean, they use psychology and fear, intimidation, all of that. Are these criminals trained, you know, within these organizations? I, I'm of the belief they are. I mean, they're so good at what so good at what they do. Like, what, like what trigger that you have could be different from what trigger that I have, and and depending on the type of uh, of contact that they have with you, uh, may bring that 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 uh, that trigger uh, to light. And if if that's brought to light, I think they're quickly able to adjust to whatever that trigger is and provide and provide that uh, you know that that con uh, uh, to you to, to get to what their goal is. Sergeant Joyce, we can thank you again. The information that you provide is just so valuable and, and uh, um, you know, hopefully, you know, as, as people, you know, start receiving that message more because, you know, I know you folks at, at the RCMP are very diligent in, in, in doing the best you can to get that message out there, as are the, you know, senior safety program. So we thank you again. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Gary Nickerson. And I'm Quinn Taggart. And this has been Outside My Window.